everyone and welcome to episode 28 of our Let's Play series for Football Manager 2016. Alrighty, this episode we're going to play the Dutch Cup and then basically get to the end of the season. Hopefully get into some pre-season in this episode as well, so that would be good. Alrighty guys, what I'm going to do, so Eredivisie is basically wrapped up for us. We're, what, nine points clear already with the three games in the Eredivisie to go, so... Barring an absolute collapse, um, we should win the Eredivisie fairly easily. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to skip through the Fortuna Sittard game, and we're actually going to jump ahead to the Dutch Cup final, which against Feyenoord, which is in probably another um, another what, 15 odd days. So that um, yeah, it should be good. Alrighty, so I'm going to pause the video, guys, and we'll be back for the Dutch Cup hopefully quite soon. Alrighty everyone, it is Dutch Cup final day and a couple of things to cover first. We actually have won the Eredivisie. We won, uh, had a 1-1 one, one draw against Fortuna, which was good, which was enough to clinch the Eredivisie title. So that is good. Back-to-back -back titles. After a bit of a shaky start, we ended up having a quite a good season. So not quite as many points as last season, but that is fine. So that is all right. So we only lost two games. Um, had those nine draws is probably what was our biggest problem sort of the early part of the season. But once we sort of modified our tactics and I think some of our, our team sort of settled, we did make like a lot of signings um, in the off season, especially young players. So once that happened, we managed to do really well. I had the best goal difference in the league and um, yeah, I was pretty happy, especially the second half of the season. It was very, very good. Um, a lot of really, really good performances. Alrighty, a couple of other things. Just on my personal, um, my little manager's dude. Um, I'm actually in the, I just entered the Dutch Holland Hall of Fame, so I think I'm like second last or something, so, um, yeah, so that's good, and what else do we have? Alright, so this is a little bit of an interesting one here, I just want to show you this, guys. Unbeatable PSG set new record, 36 games unbeaten from 7th of May 2016, that is crazy. They've gone a full year without being, without losing a game. That is, especially including like Champions League football, that is bananas. So look at League One um, here. There, it's obviously on 10 points clear and they haven't actually lost a game all season. So they absolutely dominated um, the French League. And seeing that Monaco is actually 15 points clear of third place, um, which makes PSG 25 points clear of third, which is just a bit crazy. So they are absolutely dominant. You have a quick look at their, some of their um, Champions League games here. So... Um, oh, that's interesting. So that obviously doesn't include, that must be um, like league league results because I did, I did obviously lose 2 nil here to um, Juventus in the first knockout round. So, um, interesting. Oh, uh, when was that actually? No, that was, oh no, that was this year, wasn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that result though. So many wins. Hardly any draws either. Wow. Laurent Blanc is obviously doing a very, very good job with them. Um, where are we? Where's their staff? I assume he's still uh, manager. Wow, look at all the scouts. What are we looking at here? Staff. Um, seems good. Oh no, you know Emery. Where's um, Laurent Blanc on then? He is. I oh, got sacked. He just got sacked last last season, was it? Career stats. Um, achievements. Here we go. Yeah, sacked as Paris manager of um, PSG. So fifth of the third. Yeah. So. Um, not not long after, he got uh, sacked is when um, Emery came in, and he's done a brilliant job, so, yeah, alright, good on him. Alrighty, anyway, it's back to our game, it's Dutch Cup final day, which is great, so, a bit of a blow, we had Nemanja G, he was just got back from injury, uh, got back from injury, and then he, he injured his knee ligaments in training again, so he's going to be missed the whole rest of the season, uh, which is a bit of a blow for us, but, you know, that's fine, we'll, we'll deal with that and move on. Um, a whole bunch of people interested in Nemanja J. So there's some big clubs as well, like Inter and Stuttgart and AC Milan and Wolfsburg. So I think we have a big um, fight to keep on our players in the off-season. But I'm going to try and keep every single player that we possibly can and try and really strengthen our squad. I think don't think we really did it um, last season, but I'm actually fairly happy that we did sort of bring in a lot of young players that are start, starting to like really develop. Like I think Hendricks has developed well. Great to bring um, Kenny T back into the club. Synchroven's done okay. John House Sater has done well. Christopher A has done really, really well. Um, Ruben Jensen, players like that, you know, have sort of really come to the club and done very, very well. So that is good. Anyway, we're going to look at the game here. So it's obviously a neutral venue. The weather's fine, so that shouldn't impact the um, impact, you know, our passing style, which is good. The pitch is very good, which is another good thing to know. Um, Feyenoord, not missing a whole lot of players. So it looks like um, it's on oh, Dirk Cats, not there anywhere though. Let's have a quick look at Feyenoord, if we can. Where are we? Here we are. 
some of their players who are out. Um, Sturt Cat is back, but he actually looks like he's not being selected because he's so down low in conditioning, so that's actually good for us. Um, Alright, so who's their striker? So Dirt Cat's obviously back, although Ivan Saponik um, is back. He's their second top scorer, 14 goals, 9 assists, so that is good. Uh, yes, definitely got a lot of their best players back. So a bit different last time we played them, we had a lot of those guys out, so that's fine. Um, we've already looked done a sort of a bit of analysis. We know how they play, all that kind of stuff. I'm not too worried about that. So we're going to jump into our team, see what we can do here. Alrighty, I think Kenny T is going to start. Uh, he's obviously our best right back. Um, a little bit undecided here. I think, where's Veltman? He's still injured. He's obviously out. So I think we're going to put Hendricks in, give Hendricks a run on the left there. I'm going to leave Buzzware um, in that central defender role on the right there. And Christopher A is going to stay on the defensive mid. He's done really, or the deep line playmaker. He's done really well in that role. Normally, sort of Buzzware actually sort of started our season as our number one choice here. But it's actually good to have now that Veltman's out, have that sort of second option that Buzzware can come back to. Um, back to central defence, and then we've got Aya there, can actually, or Asia, um, can actually do really well in that role. Alrighty, so obviously the menu G's out, so we have to look at someone here. Um, what are our options? We could put Sinkgraven in. We could put Nuri in for that sort of attacking role. I'm actually half tempted to do that. I know, I think he's sort of more of a creative player. Obviously, John Halsage has done really well, though. Um, he's got a bit of work rate and things like that, so I don't know, guys. A little bit undecided. What's their form like? So, he's playing a 7.04, and Nuri hasn't played for a little bit. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Ruben Jensen has been playing amazingly, but I think he's got to start. I don't think, like, some of his trainings are actually telling him, warning him about his training level. There we go. Um, yeah, so I think what should we do? I think he's better in the box-to-box -box role. I think he's not as much of a creative player as some of our other guys. I'm going to give Nuri a start in there. And we're going to have John Halsey as a sub. Um, we're going to give Nuri a start, see how he goes in there. Um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Because he's obviously a lot more technical, um, great dribbling, a little bit more agile, and great, really great sort of vision and creativity and stuff. His teamwork is probably the big thing that lets him down in the playmaking role. Because it means he sort of doesn't pick out passes and all that kind of stuff all the time. Um, I think Milik's definitely going to be our starter, although he hasn't played really well, and El Ghazi's he's not playing that amazingly either. Um, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to give Milik another run. We obviously we spoke to him last game that we played, that we sort of had on the, on the channel here, and told him that he hadn't been playing well enough, and he did score a goal in that game and went out injured, so I'm actually going to give him another run. See, he's a little bit down on conditioning and match sharpness, but I think that's going to definitely bring in El Ghazi as a sub, so I think we'll leave out Sinkgraven there. Um, Dwight is not going to play. Um, Van Ryan is too low on conditioning and sharpness, so he's going to miss out. Hiding is going to miss out as well. So we've got Fisher on the left, so what about Fisher or Eunice? Um, Fisher's in a little bit better form, although neither of them in amazing form. Got Vegiva, we got Boylison or Dykes. So seven point six for Boylison and seven point eight eight for Dykes. So we'll give Dykes a, gut, a start. I think that's pretty much our team. Um, I think that is good. So Lasse Shoney on the right, Milik Fisher, Nuri Jensen, Christopher Ayer, Dykes Hendricks, Buzzwer, Kenny T, and Sillison. Alrighty, well that's what we're going to run with guys for the Dutch Cup final. A few sort of not controversial decisions, but I could have um, gone a few ways with a couple of those guys. So we're doing our sort of our standard thing. I actually closed down the front three. I think that worked really well last time around. So I did sort of staff with them a little bit more, um, sort of that front three. Th front three. Um, and yeah, we're going to play a little bit narrow in our sort of our team tactic, and then we're going to exploit the flanks and do that. So we're going to see what our, um, our um, assistant says here. I'm going to take off hard tackling for you and for you. I'm just going to leave it on for the three, or these actually three players here. Um, not sure about the Diaby him. Probably not because he's a fairly speedy, quick, tricky player. So I'm going to leave that off. Um, tight marking closing down for the AMC, definitely. And actually closing down for all these guys as well. Tight marking for you. You're not particularly quick, so that's fine. Already weak of foot. I have a quick look about all these guys. I don't think um, you're reasonable on your left. So I'm going to take that off. Uh, what about you? You're reasonable as well. I'm going to take that off. And same. Same. And what about you? Yeah, you're same as well. Um. 
Yep, all right, that's cool. That's what we're going to run with is our opposition instructions. Alrighty, we're going to need to tell our guys to um, keep our run going. I think that worked. Alrighty, guys, I'm going to pause the video and actually I'll, I'll change our team tactics first before we get into it. Alrighty, so we're going to play. I'm going to actually go down to narrow. It's a fairly big change. I'm actually going to drop our line back a bit. That's something I learned from last time around with Feynord. They do sort of press quite a lot. I want to give our guys a little bit more space. Um, it may backfire, but I don't think so. I think I'm fairly happy with that one. We can always bump it up if we need to. And yeah, so exploring the flanks, playing a lot narrower. Um, we're closing down the front three and dropping our defensive line a little bit just to give our guys a little bit more room. Alrighty guys, I'm going to pause the video and we'll be back soon with a result. Probably at halftime actually. I'll show you guys how we're going at halftime in the Dutch Cup. See you all soon. Alrighty guys, half time. We are 1-0 up, courtesy of a um, a Jorrit Hendricks goal a, from a free kick. He headed it in. So first goal of the season and first ever goal for Ajax. So that is brilliant timing for Mr. Hendricks there, which is good. So a bit of an interesting game here. If we look at some of the stats here, for one of the, very, very rarely, um, we are sort of not dominating possession. Actually, for most of the first half, we actually had less possession. So if only just caught it back at the end. Our pass completion rate is fairly quite low as well, 77%. Um, I'm actually not too worried because we're actually really stifling. It's sort of a bit of a scrappy game in the both sides sort of stifling each other, but we're actually um, fashioning the best chance. And actually, see here, Feyenoord actually haven't had a shot on target. They've only had three shots and they've had two long shots. So long shots are sort of a good indication um, for me of teams getting sort of frustrated and not, you know, because long shots usually come about when the players don't have any other options and they're sort of, you know, they can't sort of play their normal game and they can't get through, they can't find a way through. So they resort to like, you know, a big long shot and just try to see what, you know, hit and hope. Um, so we've only had three, two of those are long shots. I haven't had a shot on target. So I'm actually really happy how, how things are going. Um, so that is good. We're going to do a little quick little analysis about just show you guys how things are going at the moment. So we look at our heat map and stuff first. Um, there we go. So with the boss, this is our heat map. So obviously it's quite a bit splotchy all over the place, but what I'm actually quite pleased about is we're actually getting a lot of width, um, which is quite good. A lot of width down both sides of the pitch, which is a little bit unusual for us. Usually it's more, a lot more down the right. We're getting quite a bit of success down the left as well. You can see here we are just sort of defending. This is sort of a, basically a byproduct of the fact that we sort of did have less possession. So we were defending a little bit. Um, but I think that's going to change over, like over the second half that we're starting to get some possession back as well. So that is good. Um, no major things from here. Obviously, we've got sort of these linkages here. I'm happy with that. I'm fairly okay with that. Have a quick look without the ball. Obviously, we drop quite a bit deeper once we have, don't have the ball, which is fine to be expected, really. Um, do the same for Feyenoord here. And as you see, they're really narrow, very, very narrow. They basically have no width apart from their, their fullbacks who aren't really doing a whole lot. They're getting a lot of joy down there, down there, right, which is our left. Um, you see it for them as well, a big sort of heat map splotch, splotch here, um, which sort of shows that they're sort of defending a fair bit as well. So I'm actually sort of quite happy with this. They're sort of all over the show. They haven't really got a defined sort of structure here, whereas we do. Look at our sort of structure. We actually got like a clear structure here. Our, our roles and stuff are the fine. Um, we're actually getting some width in different areas of the park, which is good. Um, whereas Feyenoord are really only sort of any success down the right here. A little bit down the left, but not really. Um, success down the right. So that is um, fine. So what we're going to look at now, take both of those things off, put our thing back on here. Um, we're going to look at some mistakes here to make sure we're not making any major mistakes. So we've got missed interceptions. We're going to bunch through the middle here. I'm going to have a quick look at some of these just to have a look. Just to recall my memory. So looking at Christopher Aya here. Um, so that was fine. Uh, Sillison got that one anyway. So that was going as a missed interception. We're not worried about that one. Um, Buzzware here is a missed interception. That, yeah, that's, that, for me, that's not a missed interception. Like, the ball's over his head, so what was he supposed to do? Um, 35, which is a dike. So we're going to look at this one. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Steelson caught that. It was no danger, so I'm not worried about any of those. We're going to lastly have a look at this one here, the 28, which is Nuri. So I'm not worried about that one either, so... Yeah, so they're all fine, which is all good. I have a look at Fane, I actually see what they've mistaken. They haven't really hold, made them a whole lot of stakes. There's sort of some missed interception in this area, which is okay. So we're going to take all that off now. What are we going to look at here? Probably our tackling. So I haven't really, no major problems. A few missed tackles on the right over here. A couple from Kenny T. One from Aya. Um, one from Nuri and Dykes there. So not too worried about those. Feyenoord, sort of the same. A few missed tackles down there right. 
nothing sort of major that I'm really worried about there. Aerial challenges here. So we did sort of lose one here. So look at this one, which is Basilea. Keep an eye on him. So, all right, so that was one there. So he did miss that, and that was a mistake. Gave Diaby a header at goal, so that's okay. I'm not too worried about that, though. Um, by the way, we missed another one there, and that was a uh, missed one there as well, but not too worried about that. Feyenoord, yeah, so they, they haven't really had anything there. So looks like from this and from the game as well, like I'm just sort of looking at these purely stats, like I've obviously got my own interpretations of watching the game, but looking at this, obviously, this suggests to me that Feyenoord getting quite a few crosses in, so we're going to check that in a little bit of a minute. Uh, and just make sure, uh, and I suspect they're getting a lot down their right as well. That's based on watching the match at, match and the heat map is that's where they get most of their play. So I may look at maybe shutting down the right flank a little bit more. Uh, maybe putting Dykes back to a supporting role or maybe shutting down his close or dropping his closing down. Something like that. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But given we're sort of up, we're playing fairly well. I'm not too worried about that. So look at some crosses now. So our crossing here. So Dykes actually had a fair bit of success, which is good to say. So he's made some good um, intercept or good crosses there. So now look at Feyenoord. Yeah, so they're putting in like quite a few crosses in from deep over here. And number two is Motta. So he's there. I think he's their full back. Uh, he's probably, no, probably their winger, isn't he? One of their sort of one of their attacking mid players. No, he's their full back. I think he's their full back. So he's getting quite a lot of success here. So same for 15, which is he's actually one of their strikers. So I'm thinking these are all going to be free kicks because he's one of their strikers. So he really shouldn't really be out there. So we look at Motta, see if we can shut him down. He's probably getting most of their play out there. So we look at some passing here for Feyenoord, and yeah, so we can see sort of a big cluster over here on the right, and so directing probably a lot of their play down this way, which is okay. And yeah, for us, we're sort of fairly even over the pitch, which is quite good, actually. Can have a look at some missed passes here, see if we can see anything major, any problems. Um, not really. Kenny T's missed quite a few passes, intercepted passes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, I can see that, which is quite a few for a first half. So we'll keep an eye on him. We may look at need replacing him if we need to, if he's not doing all that well. Um, sort of a few here and there. Fisher's had a few. Um, Jensen, Jensen's had a few. Ayers had a few as well. So I'm not too worried about most of those. Last thing I'm going to check is looking the players here into Feno, looking at some of their passing stuff. Basically, I want to see where most of their passing is coming from. So passes completed is Mottas. He's their fullback there. He's got 23, um, which is second in their team. So El Armadi is their second one there. Yeah, so Mottas getting a lot. And he's receiving a lot of passes as well. So 30, which is the most out of the team. So it shows a lot of plays coming down his right flank there. Now what we're going to do is look at um, look at at their so Motti here so he's six point nine which is actually the best rating their team so that shows he's having a good game. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into him so he's a that their right back which is fine. So he's fairly strong on both feet which is fine. Um, decent stats here and there. His positioning isn't great though. He's got some decent work rate, teamwork and stuff. Okay, crossing. What are you going to do? I'm actually tempted. Give them where 1-0 up. I am actually think I'm going to. It's not always recommended to do this because it can drag your own play out. I'm actually going to get Fisher to man mark Motta. Um, and here we go. Specific player mark their fullback. So we're going to do that. So hopefully, I'm hoping that sort of shuts down that outlet there. And it should only be a matter of, you know, an issue for defensive phases of the game. So in attack, it shouldn't matter. But I'm hoping that sort of is going to shut down their flank. And if we do that... Um, that should shut down a lot of their attacking threat and hopefully means we can get some more possession and keep control of the game. So that's what we're going to do. Alrighty guys, we uh, didn't do the team talk, did I? No. So halfway there, cup is almost out. So I'm going to say one cup on the hand, go out there and make sure you can get both hands on it at full time. So I didn't really do a whole lot there. Alrighty guys, I'm going to pause the video again and we'll be back at full time with a hopefully a win. Oh, guys, penalties. Why the hell not? Um, so Feyenoord scored around the 70 minth, which was disappointing. Um, a couple of guys didn't sort of had bad second half, ended up taking them off. Um, in extra time, we couldn't unfortunately get a result, so we go down to penalties. And why not? Why the hell not? We had our penalties in our last Dutch Cup game, the semi final, I think it was. Um, so we might as well make it exciting. So we're going to get our guys here probably by. Yep, by penalties, and we'll go for you. I think we'll go for you because you've got better composure than for you, 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 and you. Alrighty guys, penalties, 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 penalties. Here we go. I have full confidence in our penalty taking ability. There we go, it's one down, so that's fine. Silison will bounce back. Silison is the man. 
We're not going to do it. We can't. We can't do it anyway. We're just going to say take him off and do the the World Cup thing that um, Van Hal did, Van de Gaal did, or Van Hal, um, and put on Tim Krul. So we can't do that. We used all our subs, which is fine. There we go. Johnny. Johnny put slotted the way the first one, which is good. So here we go. Sillerson. Sillerson can do it. Sillerson's the man. Oh, and he did. He saved it. Brilliant. 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 So we went up. Alrighty, guys. This is good. We're in the lead. We can. We can hold it here. El Ghazi's going to score. El Ghazi's had a good second half. And damn it, he sucks. I'm gonna suck him. Um, no, I'm not. Um, ready. So that's fine. It's back to even kill. Alrighty, come on, Silson. You can do it. Alrighty, that's fine. Our next guy's gonna score. We're still in this. We're still good. Hendrix can do it. Hendrix is good. And he does. Look at that. In the top. The goalkeeper didn't even move. Had no idea where I was going. Cool, so it's still on even, which is good. Dirk out. He's going to miss it. He's going to miss it. I know he is. Oh, it's so close, Dillison. Alrighty, it's getting close, guys. Um, who's up next for us? Nuri. Nuri can do it. He can do it. And he does. Look at that. Brilliant. Cool as a cucumber. So, it's getting really close, guys. It's it's up to the, what is it, squeaky bum time for Selax. Sillerson's going to save this, so I can see. And he is... Oh, no, he didn't move! Move, you lazy so-and-so. All right, we need this one. Who's up? Christopher A. Oh, yeah, he's going to score it. He can do it. Oh, no! I can't believe that. Oh, that's disappointing. I can't believe it. The Dutch Cup... The Ajax and the Dutch Cup just don't... Just don't happen. Just don't work. Deary me, that, that's disappointing. That is very, very disappointing to lose a Dutch Cup. I suppose to be perfectly honest, we didn't have the smoothest runs through the Dutch Cup. We did have a, quite a few um, close matches and some penalties in the last match. And unfortunately, we just couldn't hold off Feyenoord in that second half. Um, yeah. Uh, they didn't change their formation, but I, I don't know if our guys just didn't didn't play as quite as well or, or what happened. I'm just... Anyway... Anyway, it's done. There's nothing we can do about it now. It's just, that's life. And, um, yeah, so Frank Boer actually didn't win, or hasn't won the Dutch Cup yet, actually, since he's been there for, what, five seasons now? Um, yeah, he hasn't won the Dutch Cup yet, so Ajax and the Dutch Cup. The curse continues. Two seasons in, and we still can't win it, though we may, did make the final, so... I was going to say that's not good enough. Oh, dear me, that's disappointing. I really wanted some silverware this season. I mean, obviously, we got the Eredivisie title, but that's to be expected. I really wanted the Dutch Cup. Oh, damn it. 4-3 on penalties. A quick little analysis here, guys. Have a look. See if I can work out what happened in the second half. So we're going to look purely at the second half here. See what changed. So we're going to take this off. All that off. There we go. So, heat maps to start with. There we go. With the ball. Um, what about Feyenoord? So you actually see, look, this... Compared to their first half, their second half was far better. So I'm thinking maybe potentially they just played a bit better. So they were quite sort of... A little bit sort of ratty in the first half, and sort of a little bit better space in the second half. It looks like they actually dropped back quite a bit, didn't it? Actually, I just noticed that there. So keep an eye on that. They did. They dropped back a lot, so that's interesting. That was obviously a tactical change they made in the second half. They dropped back quite a bit, so that probably gave their players a little bit more time. And um, interesting. Maybe, maybe we should. Maybe I should have countered that with. I actually didn't notice that in the game. I didn't really notice any changes. But um, maybe I should have actually pushed forward with our defensive line. I mean, they don't really have massively quick players. I had one quick strike, but that was it. Interesting. Alrighty, well, that's, that's interesting. So, that's all fine there. Look at um, some passing stuff here. Take off received passes. What do we look at here? So, yeah, still fairly well balanced for us. I'm not too worried about that. Did quite a few intercepted passes, though. Which is a bit concerning. Just for a second half. 59 intercept passes for a f half of football is quite a lot. Have a look at Feyenoord here. See what they actually did. So you really see they dominated the centre of the pitch here, didn't they? They really dominated that centre of the pitch. Which is probably to be expected given their formation. Um, yeah, so... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I think our approach was right. Like, shutting down the middle, playing narrower and trying to exploit the flanks, I think was good. Like, you can actually see, like, we really... This is sort of indicative here. See, this sort of, this sort of, it's quite a vacant area, area here, like, huge amount of passes through here. Once they sort of hit this area here, they couldn't get through, which is, it's basically a sign of our defensive block here. You can sort of see this area, it's like, this sort of this big semicircle. 
comes around here and once they sort of hit this area, they couldn't really get through, which is good. So, I don't know. I don't think we played particularly bad in the second half. Feyenoord did play better than, than they did in the first half. Um, yeah, it was just, just a disappointing goal to concede there late. I'll show you the goal in a minute, guys. So have a look at their crosses, actually. So, I actually see in the second half, Motta had three crosses and didn't have any success, which is a big difference to the first half. So, um, yeah, so that's good. So, that's, I think it did work with Fisher. I don't think it, it was a detriment to his play. Um, I think we did sort of shut him down a lot more. So, actually, have a look at... Feyenoord with their heat maps here with their with the ball. So there's Mott in the first half, so he's about there. I was going to see if he sort of was pinned back at all in the, compared to the second. Eh, not really. I can't really see much difference. Obviously because they dropped back, so... Yeah, I can't really see much of a difference there, to be perfectly honest, so... That's fine. Um, about some player stats here. Feyenoord, so just look at the second half actually. Do you really have 54 passes in the second half? No, that's not right. It's for a whole full, that's a full game, isn't it? Alright, so that doesn't reflect here with the, the second half thing. Uh, no, it doesn't. So that's for a full game. Alright, so what do you have? 26 in the first half? So you need what? 20, 18 in the second half. So I did have a lot less passes and a lot less received passes. He had 30 in the first half, so only 20. So I think we did shut him down a lot better than we did in the first half, but maybe that sort of opened up some of their other players. So El Amadi did really well, actually quite, quite a decent game. No key passes, but he was involved in a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. Alrighty, guys. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm a little bit stumped. I I think maybe Feyenoord just played a little bit better. Maybe I didn't react well enough. Maybe I should have made a couple more changes in terms of our tactics to counter the fact that they were playing deeper. Maybe I should have checked out the analysis screen and actually looked at they were playing deeper. And if I realised that, I would have made some changes. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's life. We're going to go to post-match analysis. I'm going to show you the couple of goals first. So this is our first goal in the first half. Hendricks with a brilliant header there into the top left corner. Really good goal for his first goal for the club was really, really good. Go Hendricks. Team Hendricks. Alrighty. And then Feyenoord's goal in the 76th minute. Damn them. So watch this whole thing. I'm actually going to kind of dissect this a little bit. See how what, what actually happened here. So obviously we had the ball here and then Fisher lost it. So Motta made the pass there. And you see, we're actually not in a bad position. You sort of look at the, here. We've got these two strikers here, but we've got two central defenders on them. We've got, behind the ball, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six players behind the ball. They've got three, really. Uh, so six on three. We should be totally fine in terms of this. So it's sort of this counter-attack. Just fine. We get our guys back fairly good. So Dice got completely skinned there, which was um, unfortunate. So that was one of their strikers here in Saponiak. So that, that does, when that happens, does put you under pressure. Though Dykes looks, he recovers fairly well, so that's totally okay. Immers is there. So we've got him surrounded here, so we should be totally fine. Look at this. They haven't really got a whole lot of plays. You can see Fisher's tracking Motta back, so he shouldn't be a threat. Um, we've got Dykes covering their number nine there, so we should be totally fine here. So that's all good. Yep, so they feed it out to the left, get a bit more space. We're still totally covered. Look, they're all covered. Got two guys on their central defender here, one on here, one on here. Um, you should see Fisher's doing a good job. And we've got two guys in centre mid there. We've got three coming out here, which is probably a little bit many, but that's okay. So he switches it back there. Get some space. Slots it all through to their number nine. Uh, there we go. Hendricks missed the missed the tackle. And number 13. So how did he get free? I'm just going to switch it back a little bit. Yeah, switch it here. So watch number 13 here. Lex Immers, which is their AMC. So we're going to watch his play where he goes. So that's um, John House Sater. So he, yeah, he sort of lost him. So he switched across. Christopher Ayer. All right, so Christopher Ayer. So there's two things that happened here. Hendricks missed the tackle. Ayer didn't follow him, didn't track him back. So there he go. Let's him go. Yeah, that's a mistake. And then Baselware's in sort of a bit of no man's land. Actually, and then Baselware and... Um, Kenny T actually play him on. Yeah, because he's almost... Kenny T played him on. He's almost offside. Oh, Buzzware stepped up. And then Kenny T played him on. And Christopher... I think that's Aya's mistake, to be honest. I mean, it's Hendricks and Aya. 
maybe it's sort of a, a youth thing. Obviously, Hendrik is, what, 21, and Christian A is only 19. So maybe it's a bit of a youth. A bit of a mistake there. I think that's what happened, guys. You look at that. The run from Immers just wasn't tracked. And there we go. And he slots at home. Disappointing. Dis -a -dis -a disappointing. Anyway, that's life. That's what happens. And they went up losing on penalties. So we did have more possession. We had more shots on target, though. They obviously did get a lot more um, shots in the second half. Look at those fouls from Feyenoord. They played a really sort of aggressive game. It really sort of closing down. Um, interesting. Maybe we should have dropped our uh, defensive line back a little bit, give our guys a little bit more time. Interesting. Well, that's something to learn from next time. Anyway, guys, there we go. So running at nearly 30 minutes. So I think what I'll do, I may just sort of run this into, I'll just run through the next couple of games. That's disappointing. Anyway, because um, we obviously wrapped up the, the Dutch Cup, which uh, the, the Eredivisie, which is done now. The Dutch Cup's done. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to run through the last two games just quickly off camera. I'll pause the video. And um, yeah, we'll come back and we'll do a quick little analysis and probably just kind of end this um, episode around the 35 minute mark. So that should be good. All right, guys, I'm going to pause the video and we'll be back shortly. Okay, everyone, the season is done. Second season is done. And the last game of the season was actually my 100th game in management, which is good. So 100 games down. So I actually didn't have a great end to the season. So I had two draws um, and a... Where are we? That's the wrong... Why on earth is that showing there? That's the wrong dates, isn't it? Um, where are we? Dum, 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 dum. Why is this not working? 2016. Yep. Dates. Yep. Heard of Um, Interesting. Not quite sure what's going on there. Why that's not showing up. Anyway. Here we go. That was a bit weird. Um, alrighty. So we had, yes, we had a draw and a defeat. So last game a defeat, which was a bit disappointing, but that's okay. Played fairly weak teams in both games. Sort of gave a lot of our younger guys go, like some Wesley and Hendricks and things like that. We gave them some run out, get some game time. So that was good. So fairly happy with the second season. Um, it could have been better. It could have been worse. I think overall, it wasn't too bad. So winning the Eredivisie, making the Dutch Cup final, but Champions League was a big disappointment. Um, yeah, so losing the Dutch Cup final was disappointing as well. So, but that's life. I think next, like, I think this time around, we're going to um, into the off season again. Try really be really, really sort of brutal about trying to keep our players as much as we possibly can, and really try and sort of build on our team. I think last time, like I mentioned before, we didn't perhaps build on it. We sort of got a lot of young guys in, which was good. Uh, I think we got a really good spine to the team now. If we can sort of add some really good players back in, like if we can grab Klaassen and CM De Jong and stuff, I think it's players like that that we can get back. Some sort of really good experienced top class players. We can actually really make a push for um, get, at least getting out of the group stages and making, you know, maybe giving a few teams to scare in the, in the knockout stages. So that's the aim, guys. We're definitely going to build for the third season. That is good. We've still got another three seasons, obviously, to go for our five season goal for the, the Champions League. So that is totally fine. All right, we're going to do a bit of a quick um, recap or update of the season, a bit of an overview about what's happened with us and everybody else and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start with other leagues around the world to see what's happened. So. In um, Spain, Barcelona have clinched the title fairly easily. So they have five points clear. I think they have a game to go, but that's fine. Um, so Madrid in second. Real Sociedad still going to finish in fourth again. So two years in a row for David Moyes, finishing fourth for Real Sociedad, which is pretty great effort for them. Um, yes, yeah, so that is good. And in the Premier Division, Arsenal, first title in God knows how many years. They have won that by seven points. That's just two games to go, so... They've clinched that, which is good. So Man United probably maybe finish in second, though City's close behind. So Arsenal, United, City, Chelsea are going to be the top four because Liverpool's 10 points behind Chelsea in fourth. So then Liverpool, Tottenham. And yes, yeah, so that is fine. So West Ham, Sunderland, Brentford looks like they're going to be rent relegated. West Ham, uh, Swansea, and West Brom, I guess, are probably still in with a shot. So a bit of a relegation battle there. Um, in France, have you seen um, PSG actually ran away with the title, which is fine. So that's um, good for them in Germany. So Bayern have won the title or will win the title. They've still got a few games to go. So the 12 points, uh, eight points clear of Leverkusen and then Dortmund's um, back in third. So they're doing okay. Um, actually, we had a had a job offer from, that's, I think that's Schalke. In right, in real life, the Gelson 
Kirchen, I think that's Shulkay in real life, so I actually had a job offer from them, so that was actually, obviously, well, obviously I'm not going to take it because this is an IAC save, but actually it, wasn't a, it was a pretty decent offer, so they ran a 25 million transfer budget, so fair bit of money to spend there if we wanted to. All right, Juventus have won the title in Italy, AC Milan in second, Roma in third, so Milan has done pretty well. They did actually really spend quite heavily um, the last sort of last season, actually spent, I think they set a record fees, around, spent around 60 million pounds, I think, brought a lot of players in. Um, which is good. So actually, Atletico, I just want to show you guys one thing. I think that's pretty much everything else. So Celtic won the the Scottish League and the Sky, the Championship is not quite finished yet. So I'm going to have a quick look at, at, at um, Atletico here for one player in, there we go, Memphis. So here we have, as I mentioned before, went to Atletico for 33.5 million from Man United. He has had an absolutely brilliant season. So 46 games, he's got 33 goals. Um, Forrest, his 13 player of the matches, had an overall rating of 7.61, so he's had an absolutely bananas, really good season, though. His, his form isn't really reflecting through to Holland, which is 36 caps and 86 goals. So I definitely he sort of hasn't reflected through to there, so that is very, very interesting, but he's obviously had a brilliant season. Um, at Atletico, so we are, what about us? We look at us now, look at our team, look how we played, who did really well, all that kind of stuff. So... We're going to look at appearances first. Who made the most appearances? Sillison, obviously. Um, Barzawer, Milik. Um, Christopher A, actually. He's quite good have Christopher A, obviously a young player, but get a lot of games this season. He's really developed brilliantly this season. For his only 19 years old, he's well and truly a first-team player now. He's one of the first-team names on the sheet, so that is really, really good. So, uh, if you jump into his stats here... Um, so he's made a lot of progress here over the course of the season. You see some things, like, especially like things like his composure have just gone leaps and bounds um, ahead. Like all, most of his stats have really come up a lot. So he's off the ball and his technique and things like that. He's done a really great job this season. His physicals are, you know, well and truly good enough for what they need to be. Um, he's quite strong, got some good stamina. You know, relatively okay. You know, decent um, speed. Jumping and heading are quite good. He's got some really good off the ball and positioning. His position is going to need a little bit of work. I think that's what I should maybe work on in the next season or so. Get his position because obviously he's a defensive midfielder. So um, he can play sort of like we used to say there anywhere sort of through the middle from defensive mid up to attacking mid. So he can play anywhere there. I think he's more of a defensive mid player for me because he sort of lacks the flair. I like sort of attacking midfielder players to have some really good flair. Um, and his vision as well, probably not quite enough for what I'd like him to do, but I think he's sort of a really good all-round. He's got some really great mentors here, like composure, having great composure there is brilliant. Some good anticipation, decisions, concentration, great determination. He's got some really good technical stuff, so he's an absolutely brilliant player. So for um, 975k, he we picked him up for from start in Norway. He's been an absolutely bananasly good signing, so already valued at 3.6 million. I'm not going to sell him for anything, basically, if I can avoid it. So that is good. Um, Ruben Jensen for a free transfer. This guy has done really, really well for us this season. So jump in here. He's had 28 games, two goals, six assists. Um, really good pass completion rate. Made some lot of tackles, dribbles, um, 7.24 average rating. So some of his stats here have come down. I actually sort of warned him about that. But I think for a free signing, like for a free signing now value at 2.3 million, um, he's actually done really well for us this season. So he's been a great pickup for us. Sort of going to be a utility player next season, I think. Um, he's off the ball and positioning is probably his big weaknesses. And like he's got his marking and tackling aren't good enough to sort of be a like a defensive mid player, which is sort of his natural player. So then he's sort of into the box to box. He's not creative enough for a, a, like the central midfield attacking because his vision and flair for me aren't high enough. Um, yeah, so it sort of makes him a bit of a utility player, but he hasn't really well played a lot of games this season, probably more than I would have thought. So that is good. Um, Veltman's had a lot, which is good. He's had a little bit of development. Um, so he's obviously a very, very good player now. Kenny T back at the club had an absolutely brilliant season. Second, um, you know, returning to the club, he's had some good development as well, which is really good for him. So, um, yeah, seven point nine one average rating, twenty six um, games, four assists, and he's done really, really well coming back to the club. That was a very good pickup for us. Hendricks, his first season at the club, he's done quite well. Some good development here, so he's quite a rounded player. His potential to move him in defensive mid is actually where he's playing for um, PSV at the moment. Is actually he's been moved into defensive mid and actually doing really well. Um, Guardado, Guardado, however you want to pronounce it, um, has been injured, so that's sort of given him the opportunity there in real life to actually move into into that defensive mid. So I think for me he's probably going to be a, a central defender. I, like I know his positioning's probably not quite good enough. His strength is a little bit down, and maybe his marking tackling aren't good enough. But I think he does well enough at defensive mid to sort of warrant that. So we could look at. Uh, at, at central defender, sorry. Um, we could look at maybe moving him back to defensive mid, but yeah, probably not. 
So he's done actually quite well. The Manny G's had a good season. He's sort of a bit injured for the last half of it, though. So apart from that, though, he's done quite well. Lesser Shona, he's obviously been brilliant, as always. Um, you're not going to throw everyone. So what about our goals? Who's our top goals guy? So not really a massive, like a very, very team spread, which is actually quite pleasing. I actually quite like that in my tactics and my teams to have a, sort of a good, not be reliant on one player. So Milik, good start to the season, probably faded in the second half, had a real sort of bad patch of form. I'm not really quite sure why. I don't think like the tactics didn't really change for him, like his role. So it could have been maybe things around him or maybe it's just, you know, obviously just sometimes players have slumps. But we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, he's a very, very good player. Um, we want to keep him as much as we possibly can. So he's fine. Um, yeah, so Lassa Shone, Yunus, El Ghazi, Fisher all on um, seven and Shone on eight. So what about assists? Where's our assists? Uh, I don't think I've actually got a, like an actual assist one. What about assists per 90 minutes? So, John Howe Sage actually is uh, at the top of that, along with um, Heitinger. So, obviously, Heitinger didn't play a whole lot of games, though, so that's a little bit skewed there. But then, Lassa Shona. It's actually... John Howe Sage is a fair way in front in terms of um, assists there. So, again, like, for a 350k signing from Rosenborg, um, only 19 years old, he's had a lot of development this season as well. And he's a really great box-to-box. -box. I think he's going to be an absolutely brilliant box-to-box. -box. So he's done really well for us, which is good. Quite a few games, which is good. Alrighty, what do we look at here? Key passes, who's had the most? Um, Kenny T, look at that, amazingly. 128 is massively out in front. Lasso shown in second, about key tackles. Um, Hendricks, Veltman, Dykes, key headers. Veltman, so Veltman's leading some of those. Passes completed, 90 minutes. Lasso shown in, Kenny T. Shows a lot of player coming out that right there. You see these two guys basically were playing out on the right, so sort of shows a lot of play in front of that out there, which is totally happy about it. Obviously worked for us. Pass completion rate, um, our two goalkeepers had a lot, which is quite good. Shows that they're, um, you know, they're doing quite well. Uh, what do we got? Assi uh, mistakes here. So Ruben Jensen, Buzzer, Christopher Ayer, Kenny T, Hendricks. They all played a lot of games. I'm not really too worried about the mistakes there, so that's okay. And yeah, that's pretty much all that we need to look at here. Inter interceptions here. So Hendricks, Hendricks, Hendricks and Veltman, um, Buzzer. Oh, a lot of been, um, intercepts. So. It's quite good for our sort of defensive players. So that is good. Um, yes, yeah, so what else we look at here? I think we'll maybe look at a bit of a loan report, show you how some of our loan players have gone. I think there's one here somewhere. Dum, 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 dum. If I can find it, there's one here somewhere. I know, I saw it. Search loan, loan, loan report. There we go. 2nd of May. Yep, that's the most recent one. So, these are our guys out on loan. So, most of them played a lot of games. A few guys down at the bottom here didn't. Um, obviously, your Pondo only went out on loan. Gino Deck is probably the most disappointing, not playing a whole lot of games at NEC, though he did have some decent development. Probably not quite as much as I would have liked. So, that's probably the big disappointment this season. Everyone else, Ella Juicy sort of went out late as well, and Simpson obviously late as well. So, Everyone else actually got a fair few games. Like everyone else, basically most of the guys got at least twenty games, which is sort of my my minimum for you know put young players to sort of develop up, which is you know which is fairly good. So um, yeah, so a lot of our guys did really well. So Ezra Wallian playing at Almere City, which is obviously in the the second tier, but he had a bit of a crazy season: twenty one goals in thirty three games. So he did really, really well on loan, which was great for them. Um, Donny Vanderbeek played 46 game for Stade Rene, which is really, really good. So obviously that's in League One in France. So it didn't have a great season, 6.49 rating, but obviously still got a lot of games. Had some really good development for him as well, and he's 20 years old. So that was really quite pleasing. He played a lot of games, which is what we want to see to get players developed. Lucas Anderson had a really good season as well on loan at Rayo in Spain. So 41 um, appearances, 7 goals, 11 assists. He did really quite well. Had some really good development for him as well. So probably going to try and incorporate him into the team somehow next time around that we are fairly well stocked in terms of players but I think we'll do that um, Shane Nunnally one of my favourites I think this guy's going to be an absolute legend so attacking midfielder out on the right only 18 years old still pace to burn some really good sort of technical and mental stuff there um, great personality so 20 determination and he's um, a driven personality which is a brilliant one so it means he's going to basically meet so if we give him the game time it means he's going to meet his um, potential you know, fairly well so I think he's going to be a very very good player for us yeah, so there you go. A lot of our guys did fairly well. Zivkovic had um, six goals on 24 games on loan at Toulouse, which is quite good. 20-year-old player there, quite quick. I think I'm trying to try and incorporate him in 
the team next season. I'm not quite sure we're going to have a place for him, though. We're not creative, quite creative enough for me in terms of sort of playmaking for maybe our sort of deep playing playmaker false nine. Definitely more of sort of a poacher slash advanced forward. So we'll keep it. I'll see what happens. I will keep an eye on him. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything I think, guys. So in terms of our finances, still got 12 million in the bank and transfer, 37 million at the end of the season, and obviously getting a whole bunch of money um, at the start of next season. So we're sitting pretty in terms of money. A lot of our players are wanted, so a lot of a lot of our guys like Veltman from some big clubs, Southampton. Um, Buzzler from Man United and Everton Southampton so definitely going to fight off a lot of bids for a lot of our players um, but definitely going to do it as long as you know if we can as I mentioned try and um, keep our team together as much as possible so it'll be very very interesting to see what actual bids we get um, I think that's pretty much everything guys I don't think there's really anything else I need to cover I could, sort of, could sort of look at B team and stuff like the 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 um, Ajax second team had a really rubbish season finishing last. I'm not really too worried about that. It would be good to have, um, obviously, a really sort of good performing second team. But in saying that, the second our second squad is actually gets a lot of um, under-19 players because we're sort of really light um, on numbers here. So it's just sort of see, we actually don't have a whole lot of players for the B team. So it means a lot of the under-19s actually get a lot of Duper League games, which is actually what I want. I'd actually, yeah, that's sort of, I'd actually prefer that. So... Um, it really helps their development. It helps them develop, you know, really quite quickly. So our under-19 team is absolutely stacked with talent now. It's a little bit crazy, a little bit scary how many guys are actually coming through. So we're not, definitely not going to play all of them, but we should have some really good players coming through. So, yeah, it's interesting to see how those those guys perform next season. Gil Samayo, I'm actually really excited about him. I think he's going to be a brilliant, brilliant player. He's 17 years old. Um, yeah, bought him for 350k from Den Bosch, and yeah, he's had a pretty decent season. So 23 appearances, 15, 13 goals, two assists, and played um, a few games in the Jupiter League, which is good. So obviously he's only 17, so he's got a fair bit of development to go. But I think he's got the makings. Um, you know, obviously got huge potential. I think he's got some decent stats. Needs some work here and there, but I think he's got some really good stats. So actually, end up being a really good striker. Um, yeah, right. I think that's probably enough of me talking, guys. 46 minutes in the episode is very, very long. Again, apologies for that. And I think we're probably going to um, end the episode here and end the season. And next time around, we'll jump into preseason and probably run through and start maybe shaping our squad and looking about who we're going to sell and keep and buy and all that kind of stuff. So that should be good. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Hope you enjoyed this series. Let me know feedback, comments, suggestions, all that kind of stuff. Always like hearing your um, comments in the on the channel, so that would be good. Alrighty, guys, I um, hope you've all had a wonderful day. I hope you've enjoyed this season with IX, and yeah, I'll see you all soon for the next episode.